Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Farming Simulator 25 Tips and Tricks video. Today, we're going to talk about modifications. Where do you get them? How do you install them? And how do you activate them so they're going to be available in your game? If you are a longtime fan of Farming Simulator, well, then this video isn't for you because you already know where and how and what to do with them. If you're brand new to the game with the release of Farm Sim 25, or you've just found out about it at some point during Farm Sim 25's lifespan, then this video is for you because Farm Sim has a very active modding community and mods are used heavily within the game in order to just keep things fresh and alive. For example, you can download new maps. You're not limited to just the three maps that come with the game. The entire world is available to you, assuming that the map is uploaded to the Giants Mod Hub, because that is the only way console players are going to get access to mods, sadly. PC players, on the other hand, again, you have the entire world available to you. You can download mods from the internet and put them into your game manually. This video is going to talk about all of those aspects. Let's talk first about the downloadable content menu. That's where console players are going to find their mods. So here on the main menu, we have downloadable content. And when we land in here for the very first time, we land at a categories section. Now, while FS25 at the time of recording this video is still fairly new, being that it has been out for less than a week at this point, there aren't too many mods listed here in the category section yet. But that will change as the game continues to progress in its lifespan. For example, with respect to the official mod hub and Farming Simulator 22, there are over 7,252 mods published to the official Giants mod hub over FS22's lifespan. As far as console mods, 5,674 of those were also released for all platforms, which means that they were available for PC and console players alike. From within the categories, we can come here and go into a specific category to find a specific mod listed, but we're going to back out of that for now. At the top, we're going to be able to tab over to the best category. This is going to show us a categorized list of the highest rated mods to the lowest rated mods. When you download a mod, you're going to have an option of rating it, and I highly suggest you do rate mods how you feel they deserve with a star rating from one to five stars. This does help go a long way in one, recommending the mod to other players. Two, it rewards the modder with a nice satisfying five star rating or four star rating, which gives them a nice sense of accomplishment. And three, Giants does financially pay modders a little bit of money, let's say pennies or fractions of pennies on the download for their submissions. And as such, from what I understand, they get a different cut of the pie, if you will, based on the rating. So the best rated mods are going to get a little higher cut of that pie, whereas a lower rated mod is going to get a little lower cut. So it's important to rate your mods. Here we have, for example, a five star animal husbandry's mod. This is going to be available for PC players only. And it's going to be a script mod, and that's why it's available for PC players only. And it's going to basically increase the limit from 15 to 64 animal husbandries. If we come here to most downloaded, this is obviously going to be pretty self-explanatory. The most downloaded mods are going to be listed first, whereas the least downloaded mods are going to be listed last. Now, this doesn't necessarily represent the best mods out there. That would be the highest rated mods but this just represents the most popular at the time. So government subsidy, this was a day one mod. Clearly it's gonna have the most downloads compared to something that was possibly say released today or yesterday. The latest mods are gonna be the flip side of that. They're gonna show us the latest mods released in order from earliest to oldest. And then recommended are gonna be mods that are recommended to you based on ratings and based on just general use of other mods. Here under installed, this is gonna show us all the mods that we have installed. Currently the only thing I have installed right now is a MacDon DLC. If we have any mods that need updates, then that will be listed here. This is gonna show us a list of all the DLC that we have installed. And this is gonna show us a listing of any extra content that we have installed as well. 
So let's go back up here to our categories. Now, before we dive into individual categories, talk about navigating the mod from within the mod hub, let's talk about this screen at the bottom. Show crossplay only mods or show all mods. This is what I would call a confusing menu. And Giants sometimes does this with their menus and it's a story of what I call the opposite. If we see show crossplay only mods, we're seeing all mods, not just crossplay mods. If we say show all mods, then we're only seeing crossplay mods and we have the option to convert it to show all mods. It may make total sense to you. For me, it's backwards, right? I want to see this down here. It says, I'm uh, I see all mods, right? I only see crossplay mods, but no, it's backwards. Search. If we actually search, it's actually pretty decent on the in game mod hub. On the web mod hub, not so much. Stay away from searching over on the web mod hub because you're going to get crazy, wacky results. Previous menu and next menu is just going to walk us through these menus here on the side. And of course, escape will take us back and back to the main menu or back to the previous listing. So if we go into, let's say, gameplay, typically these are going to be PC only mods because typically gameplay mods are script based. It's not always the case, but it is typically the case. So a package mod, this is going to be a mod that is basically going to be a accumulation of more than one thing. So for example, the Macdon pack, we have headers, we have a vehicle, we have multiple things in a pack. So that is what the package category is going to be. Under drivables is set up very basic to the vehicle shop. We have the Alice series 9700 tractor. So we can drill into that. We get some nice screenshots. We have some information as to who the map author is, what version it is, how big is the download. And then we have some descriptive information about the mod itself. We can view screenshots. And we can most importantly, click install. It says, do you want to add it to your download list? Yes, I do. And now if we come over here, it is installed because, well, it was extremely small to install. If you haven't realized, I do not use the in-game mod hub with much frequency. I much prefer the web experience because I get more information. Let's come down here and just check another couple mods out. Let's go to mowers. So we have the GMD 4411. We're going to drill into that and we can install it. And there we go. So now that we've installed a few mods, let's go and take a look at what it looks like if we go to activate a save game. So we're going to come here to my live stream save game. And once you have DLC or mods available and installed in your mods folder, you're going to get a screen like this that says mods and DLCs. And from here, you have the ability to activate or deactivate a particular mod or mods. To activate a mod, we're just going to double click on it like this, or we can come down here, we can deselect all, we can select all, or we can click on one and hit space to deselect or select it. Once we have done that, we can come here and start our game. Once we're in game, we'll go to our vehicle shop and we will have a new menu option here called mods and DLCs once you activate your first mod or DLC. From here, you can see any DLC and mods that are active, which is a great way of just coming here and going, I wanna install or I wanna buy this tractor, which I just activated as a mod. I come here to mods and DLCs. I can select this tractor and I can do what I want in order to get it. Otherwise, you're gonna have to come here and find it in the various category of tractors Mods are typically going to be displayed at the end of the list. And if it's a mod, you'll see that because the name of the mod will be listed here on the icon as well. Now let's talk about obtaining mods from outside 
the Mod Hub, and what do you do with them once you've downloaded them? How do you get them in the game? So likely the most popular modding website to obtain mods is going to be the official Giants Mod Hub. And the way we're going to get to that is we're going to go to the Farming Simulator website, and we're going to click on Mods. And that's going to take us here to the Giants Mod Hub. And this is my preferred way of finding mods that are published on the Giants Mod Hub. Because again, I like the presentation, plus I like the information that we have here on this version of the Mod Hub versus the in-game version of the Mod Hub. So we have our categories. We have latest, which is going to show us the newest mods first, the oldest mods last. Top downloaded, very, very similar to the in-game organization. Prefab. So there are no prefabs right now, but let's just jump real quick to FS22 and prefabs. So prefabs are mods for modders, basically. So these are things that modders can use to incorporate into their mods that they are creating. So for example, here, we have a realistic sound update for a case harvester. It would be neat if you could just drop this in your mod hub or mod folder and suddenly your case harvesters had a new sound to them. But that's not the way it works. This is a sound file that needs to be incorporated into a mod that then can be used by a player and hear the sound in that modded harvester. Here's an engine sound that can be used for whatever, right? Here are some tires that can be used on various vehicles things like that. So prefabs are not necessarily mods consumable for the player. They are mods for modders. Let's jump back over here to the FS25. And then we have our categories and boy, oh boy, are there a ton of categories. We have European maps, North American maps, South American maps. Great. Are there other maps? I don't really know because well, they are all over the place. And well, just like the shop, they are not alphabetized at all. So yeah, good luck on finding anything within the categories because they have seriously blown these categories up compared to previous game. And then we have crossplay. If we go to crossplay, this will always show us the mods that are available for crossplay only. Okay. So if you are looking to have mods for a crossplay server and a crossplay server is going to require, require only mods compatible for all platforms, then that is going to be a good category for you to select. We're going to come back here to latest. And remember what I said about search? Don't use it. It's terrible. Let's go ahead and just click on something. Let's click on this machinery shed. So we have obviously the name of the mod. We have a description of the mod. We have the game it's for. We have the category it's in, the mod author, the size, the version, when it was released or updated. And for me, the most important part, the platform. So PC and Mac, so it's available for PC, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X or S. That's what that stands for. Then we have a scrolling list of screenshots and we can download the mod by simply clicking download. We're going to have to go back to the in-game mod hub in order to rate it. Okay. So let's go back and take a look at a couple more. What is, what is this? This mod regularly checks that special offers of vehicle dealers and notifies you of new machines. Oh, we get we get a notification. Ding ding ding. There is a new sale. So that's pretty cool. Here we go. On special. So this is going to be a PC only mod because it is using a script. Now, console players sometimes get really upset, maybe rightfully so, that all the best mods aren't available for console because there are scripts and Giants doesn't allow scripts on console. That's BS. Okay. I'm just going to call it out right now. BS. Sony, Microsoft. That's who you need to be targeting 
They're the ones who are restricting access to scripts on their platforms to keep you away from possibly ruining your gaming experience on their platforms. And I choose those words carefully because while you purchased your console, you purchased the right to use their product in your home the way they want you to use it. Okay? Consoles are very restricted, they're very locked down. They're Sony and Microsoft are only going to give you the experience they want you to have, and they want you to have the best experience possible in their minds. They are the helicopter parent, and they don't want you to hurt yourself, so they're not going to give you a big long leash to go out and do your own things. They're going to keep you very close at hand, which means they no, no, no. They don't want scripts on their product because it may affect your gaming performance. And if it affects your gaming performance, well, you might have a negative experience and you might not decide to buy the next PlayStation because of that negative experience. And that would be very, very bad in their minds. So they don't want to allow it. So enough said there. So once you have downloaded a few mods, we need to put them into our mod folder. So here we have a few files and folders. On the right, we have our downloads folder. This is where when you download things on your PC, files go. Typically, it's to downloads. Sometimes you've told it to go somewhere else. So if you have, then you know where your downloads are. If you haven't, you're gonna find them under downloads. What you're gonna do is you're going to want to select those and you're gonna to wanna to move them into your mods folder. Your mods folder is gonna be found typically under documents, my games, farming simulator 2025, mods. Now I've had people comment before in videos past, I don't have a mod folder. Yes, you do. The game can't not have a mod folder. If you don't have a mod folder, then maybe you've never launched the game, basically, because the act of launching the game creates it if it doesn't exist. It's pretty simple. For example, watch this. I'm going to close the game. I'm going to go to my mods folder. Here are the two mods that we downloaded earlier. Okay. Just for the sake of keeping those, I'm going to copy them over to my desktop. I'm going to delete this mod folder. It's gone. I deleted it, right? I'm going to launch Farm Sim 25. Watch what happens. Let me pull it back up. Look, it's back. Before I even get to the main menu of the game, it's gone and it said, oh, mods doesn't exist and puts it back. If you don't have a mod folder, you're not looking for it in the right location. Again, documents, my games, Farming Simulator 25. Farming Simulator 20, 25. That simple. Unless you've moved your mod folder, which is a different topic, we're coming in a completely different video. That is where it's going to be. Documents, My Games, Farming Simulator 2025. So back to putting mods into your mod folder. We're going to select them. We're going to drag them. We're going to drop them. And presto, now they're in our mod folder. Now, real quick, before we do load the game up, let's circle back a little bit to the downloadable content menu here in game. Now that we have some mods that we've installed from outside the in-game mod folder. Let's come over here to our installed. And you're gonna see, well, we have our shed, we have our special offers, we have the tractor and the mower that we installed earlier. What do we do about rating mods? So in order to rate a mod, we're gonna to have to come in here and open it up in the downloadable content menu, the in-game mod hub. And then we're gonna come here and rate. And from here, we can select a rating. And I encourage you to give it the rating you feel it deserves, okay? Sometimes ratings are abused 
and it's used as a popularity contest. Sometimes we see mods that get released and literally within four minutes of it being released, it has a five-star rating. How is this possible? You've downloaded it. You've activated it. You've tested it. You've used it in game. You've evaluated it. You've determined, yep, this is a good mod. You've left the game. You've come into the mod hub, downloadable content area. You've found it and you've rated it and you've given it five stars. All within four minutes? I don't think so. Now, while I did just rate special offers, five stars, without actually trying it out, I would encourage you to first load the game up, try it out, and then after you do that, come back to the Mod Hub and give it a rating you feel it deserves. So once we're in our vehicle shop, we're gonna to go to Mods and DLCs, and we can see we have our Aulis series tractor. We have our mower. We don't have the mod listed for the, the, the sales, special offers. Well, it's a script mod. So typically there isn't anything for the shop. There isn't anything to buy. There's, it's just there, it's just active, right? So it's just running. We're not necessarily going to see anything until we have a new thing added to shop. Then we'll get a notice up in the upper right corner. You also didn't notice my shed. Well, the shed, well, it's not a vehicle. It's not an implement, right? It's not gonna be in this shop. It's gonna be over here under the construction menu. So we are likely gonna find it here under the sheds. So if we scroll down here to the end, here we go. We have our new sheds at the tail end of the list. And we can place this shed just like we could place any other shed in game. We have customized. We can come here and change the color, but that's not here nor there. This isn't about this particular mod. This is more or less where you're going to find certain types of mods in game after you, after you activate them. Now let's talk about, and this is going to be for PC players, other places to download mods off the internet. And dare I say a cautionary tale about choosing where to download those mods and choosing maybe to uh, be a little risky with respect to mods when you do this. So as a PC player, we have the greatest flexibility of all because we literally can download a mod from anywhere on the internet. We can add it to our mod folder. We can activate it. We can launch the game and we can experience the mod that someone has created. We can experience the map that someone has created. That's that has great positives, but also has great potential for bad things happening. We have seen already, sadly, some toxic mods that come to not only farm sim, but have come to other games that are deliberately there to ruin your experience. We have seen mods passed off as popular mods coming from non-trusted locations. And they end up basically deleting your entire mod folder. They end up causing severe damage to your save game. So while you have great power and great flexibility to download from nearly literally anywhere on the internet, you also have great potential to negatively impact your gaming experience. Now, I'm going to say that I don't want to scare anyone off from doing it, but you just need to be cautious. I'll get asked, what are some great mod sites? What are good mod sites? What are some mod sites I can trust? You can trust the Giants Mod Hub. You notice I didn't say anything else. 
Because honestly, I can't give you a list of sites you can trust. Because sadly, sites change. And I've seen this. I've seen this with my own eyes. I've seen sites go from what I would say be a trustworthy site to just to not. Be completely not a trustworthy site. I don't want to name any of those sites because I don't want to shame them, let's say. We'll use popular terminology. But the general rule of thumb I give is if you go to the Giants Mod Hub, which I feel is the definitive source for trusted, authoritative mods. If you see, let's say, the the sales mod. What was it called? Special offers. If you see the special offers mod, are there's an auto turn off of, of your blinkers, right? Let's say you see that mod listed on the Giants Mod Hub. And then you go perusing for Farming Simulator 25 mods. You just search the internet, Farm Sim 25 mods. You'll get hundreds of websites, thousands of websites, tens of thousands of links. You visit a mod site and lo and behold, there's special offers. Well, cool. I want to download it from there because this mod site has 15,000 mods on it. And and this YouTuber guy just said the official Giants mod only had 7,400. Here's the tale of caution. See where that download takes you. I almost guarantee you that download is going to take you to just a rando download site. Well, here's something interesting that you may not know. Giants doesn't allow a direct download from their mod hub. If you link to a file from their mod hub, it won't download. You have to link to the web page for the mod. And then you have to click the download button from within the mod hub. So there is no way a website could link to Giants Mod Hub and have it download from the Mod Hub without taking you to the Mod Hub to see the page and to click the download. So anyone who is sending you somewhere other than the Giants download Mod Hub is basically stealing from the mod. And this is my logic. As I mentioned, Giants pays some amount of money, pennies on the download, to modders for downloading or for creating mods that people want to use. The act of taking a mod off the mod hub, hosting it on some other website, hosting it on some other website, only to lure players to download from their site instead of the mod hub, basically takes money from the modder. They see nothing from the 8,000 downloads that this other site has done. Whereas if they got 8,000 downloads from the Giants Mod Hub, they would have some sort of compensation from that. Now, typically when we talk about popular mods, we're not talking about 8,000 downloads. We're talking about tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. Giants gives out awards for 10 million downloads on the mod hub, just to give you an idea of scale, right? So you may say, well, what's the damage done if it's only 8,000 downloads? The damage is you don't know if the special offers you download from this other website, is it untouched? Is it modified in any way? Has it been compromised in any way? Could it contain a payload to ultimately damage my save game or delete other mods? The risk may be small, 
hopefully the risk doesn't grow because people are like, yeah, let's do that. Let's really screw people over. But the risk is there. Know your modders. Learn your modders. Follow your modders. Most modders probably have a Facebook. I don't use Facebook. I can't stand the place. But at any rate, lots of people do. Lots of people use it. Lots of people love it. That's fine. Modders will have Facebook. They'll have other things. They'll set up itch.io sites. Itch.io is great. It's a whole it's a whole web site framework designed for modders and indie game developers to create products, host products on the itch.io site, and create a website, web pages around it, and send people to it. It's excellent with one problem. Discoverability on itch.io is horrible, in my opinion. Either know it's there or you don't. And that's where following your modders is important. So if you follow your modders and you know, oh, they use an itch.io site. Well, let me just go visit their itch.io site and see what they're working on. Let me see what they've released. Let me download it from where the mod author has placed it. So following your modders will allow you to learn Oh, well, this guy, this guy always downloads his stuff or always uploads his stuff to the mod hub, the official Giants mod hub. If I see his stuff anywhere else, it's probably not legit. Or I know this guy, he's got his own itch page. He publishes all of his stuff to the itch page. He doesn't really care about console compatibility. He just wants to upload to his itch page. He knows that all his stuff is PC only. He's fine with it. Well, I can follow this guy's itch page and get his stuff firsthand. Some modders run their own websites. So learn your modders and then you'll figure out where they like to post their stuff and then go there to get their stuff as opposed to just random mod sites off the internet because again my benchmark for rando sites off the off the internet is it's a hundred percent guaranteed if it's on the giants mod hub it's going to be on a thousand other mod websites guaranteed because all thousand of those websites will scrape every mod that gets posted on the giants mod hub for themselves they're just in it to display ads to make money off of other people's backs that's all those websites are doing. So if you know of a mod that's on the Giants Mod Hub, if you know a mod that's over on some guy's itch.io site, because once somebody gets popular on itch.io, you can darn well guarantee those mod sites are going to be scraping his site as well. They also scrape each other's sites. It's, it's almost comical. You can almost follow a mod from showing up on the Giants Mod Hub to showing up on the first site that gets scraped to suddenly show up on a dozen sites because six sites scraped one or the other site and then suddenly it's on a thousand sites because all those sites scraped one of the 12 sites that it was on you know in its second tier of scraping it's it's kind of it's kind of crazy how fast things can just spread because they just steal from everyone else in order to make their own living so that's my general philosophy on mods. Mods are fine, but be cautious where you get them from. Know your mod authors. They're great folks. They deserve the utmost respect. And as such, they deserve to have their products downloaded from where they wanted them to be downloaded from, as opposed to downloaded from where some, some guy in some basement is trying to lure people in by having the ultimate list of mods and really all he's doing is he's collecting ad revenue from ad sales on his website and he's making money off of other people's work so guys i hope you all enjoyed the video maybe maybe you learned a little something with respect to where to get mods how to download mods what to look out for with respect to mods maybe what mods might be trustworthy what mods might not be trustworthy i'm going to be doing a second video here very soon 
related to how to move your mod folder. Maybe you are, uh, well, once you get into mods, sometimes you can get a little bit of a, uh, an issue where you like to collect them all. And maybe you found that the disk space on your computer where your mod folder is, is starting to fill up because it's under documents. And you need to find a way of getting more disk space. Well, there's an easy, quick way of moving your mod folder. So that video is going to be coming out next. Take a look for that in the channel. And until next time, happy farming.